Thank you for joining us for another Bible study session at the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated, uh, located at 1667 South Lauderdale Street, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm uh, continually thankful that God continues to keep us and protect us during this season of the COVID-19 uh, virus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you will make your word clear and plain to us tonight that might, we might understand uh, the place of slander and blasphemy in the world in which you placed us, that we may be able to better handle it when people speak slanderous words against us and that you will guide us to not be one that will speak slander against someone else's good name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're studying by way of an approach called systematic theology. Systematic theology is any study that answers the question, what does the whole Bible teach us today about any given topic? And we're focusing uh, tonight on uh, what does the Bible say about what defiles a person? And our main focus on what defiles a person is slander. Our focus is found in Mark chapter 7 verses uh, 14 through 23. We've been studying there for a few weeks now. Uh, let's read it. Uh, Mark chapter 7 verse 14 starts by saying, and he called the people to him again and said to them, hear me, all of you, and understand. There's nothing outside of a person that by going in him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defiles him. And when he had entered into the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not into his uh, heart, but into his stomach, and is expelled? And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. And verse 23 says, and all of these things come from within and they defile a person. This week we're starting our study on slander, which is uh, used synonymously in the Bible with the word blasphemy. Blasphemy or slander comes from the Greek word blasphemia. And in the Greek, it means to slander or detraction or to take away from a person's good name. It is speech that is injurious to another person's good name. Also, it is reproachful speech that is injurious to divine majesty. In other words, it is reproachful speech that is injurious to God. And, and we're going to study that uh, next week or week after next uh, in depth more uh, because our actions can cause the world to speak uh, slanderously against the Lord. So we have to be careful about our conduct and our actions. Now, we will look at the originator tonight of slander or blasphemy or better yet lies. Most of us uh, will be focusing on uh, slander more intensely as we go through this study. And hopefully all of us will focus more intensely. Now, we're gonna be looking at the book of Job and as we uh, think in terms of speech that is injurious to another person's name, we must realize that we are all injuring uh, uh, as we as we speak slander against a person or as someone speaks slander against us, we are injuring that person, that that person is injuring us because to injure a person's name injures that person's spirit. 
there's a philosophy that I subscribe to that says, if you can't say something good about a person, you ought to not say anything at all. As we dissect the notion of it's not what goes into the body that defiles a person, but what comes out of a person, specifically out of their heart, that defiles each of us on a daily basis. We're living during a period when doctors and scientists are uh, working feverishly to discover a vaccine that the disease uh, COVID-19 needs uh, to, uh, in order for us to be able to move on. Scientists and doctors can join their expertise together and examine their samples under the microscopic eye and discover a cure or vaccine. They're looking for diseases that must enter into the body in order to infect the body. But in our dissecting tonight, uh, our, we are looking uh, uh, at what uh, comes out of the body, not what goes in. God uh, does not have to put us under a microscope, uh, nor does he have to run tests to make the correct diagnosis of our problem, especially of slander. Since it was God who designed, uh, created the human body, uh, then we must look not to scientists or doctors to discover the cure for the problem that we are encountering today that is an age-old problem. God has proven to have the right solution to slander or blasphemy. God, through his word, can dissect a corrupt heart and discover and diagnose the problem correctly. In God's word, we find that the heart is filled with all evil. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intentions of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Proverbs uh, 23 and 7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mark 7 and 21 and 22 that we're studying from says, For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, and slander or pride or foolishness. Psalms 51 and 5 says that our problem with the heart has been around a long time. He says, Behold, I was shaping an iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, uh, we arrived here on earth with a sin problem. And it incorporated in that sin problem, one of the things that came out of us was slander. Slander is derived from a corrupt bloodline and therefore it can only be corrected by a blood transfusion. God started a new bloodline through the death of his son for sinful man. In other words, God provided us with the pure blood needed for our transfusion. We should be aware of the extent of this sin of slander and blasphemy. The speech of lies that damages another person's reputation or one who utters such malicious accusations, it, it comes out of the heart. Both in the Old and New Testament, we find frequent condemnations of the sin of slander. The Mosaic law forbade the Israelites to go up and down as slanderers among the people. In other words, busybody, lying. The dialogue that we find condemns bearing false witness in Exodus. Exodus 20 and verse 16. Don't make false accusations to a person's employer behind their back. That's one that we can, we can take to work with us tomorrow. Proverbs 30 and 10 says, don't blow the whistle on your fellow workers behind their back. They'll accuse you of being underhanded, and then you'll be guilt the guilty one. 
B, because of the destructive consequences, slander was viewed as a crime worthy of severe punishment. Psalms 101 verse 5 says, Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy, the Lord says. And whoever has a haughty look or an arrogant heart, I will not endure. I'm not going to put up with you. That's what the Lord says about us when we exhibit certain traits. Paul included slander in his catalog of evildoers in Romans chapter 1, verse uh, 30 and 32. And we'll look uh, only at verse 33. It says, though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. It is significant that the great accuser or slander of God's people and God is Satan himself. Satan is known as the accuser and uh, the adversary of God and of God's people. The devil has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. It is he who instigates the ultimate slander. For who is the, is the liar who says that Jesus is not the Christ? Revelation chapter 12 describes a war in heaven in which Michael and his angels defeated that ancient serpent, Satan, or the devil, or the deceiver of the world. Salvation is complete when the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before God. When Satan lies, he speaks according to his own nature for he is a liar and the father of lies, says John chapter 8 verse 44. Next week, just a little heads up, we're going to look at the Pharisees in their attack on Jesus. They didn't see that they were supposed to be teaching the people God's story, but instead they were teaching their stories. Let's take a look at the story of Job where Satan is making accusations against Job. In verse 1. Let me see if I can find it right quick. Job, uh, Job chapter 1. Here it is. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. That's what God had to say about Job. Now here, here, here Satan shows up in verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. My late pastor, Ariel Lee Sr., uh, once made the statement that Satan shows up at church on Sundays too. He even shows up at Bible study for the purpose of seeing who he can trip up or pull away from God. Verse 6 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? 
Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand and his possessions have increased in the land. Now that's all we're going to read, but we're going we're gonna to kind of take a look at uh, what we just read. As we, as we look at those verses that we just read, I trust that two things will be accomplished in our lives, that we will learn to be patient in our own trials, and that we will learn how to help others in their trials. In the world in which we live, it's filled with people who need encouragement instead of being torn down or lied upon. And God, we never know when he takes us through trials and tribulations successfully. He might be just preparing us for such a ministry of encouraging others. Job was a perfect and upright man. Now he was not sinless, for nobody can claim that distinction but Jesus Christ, who was tempted in all of the ways like we are, yet without sin. But Job was a complete and mature in character person and straight in conduct. The word perfect translates integrity which is another important word that we find in Job. Uh, uh, we find it in Job chapter 2, verse 3, and in verse 9, Job chapter 27 and verse 5, Job chapter 31 and verse 6. People with integrity are whole persons without hypocrisy or duplicity. In other words, they're not two-faced it. They're not like an actor that, that wears a, a, a one face at one scene and then puts on another face in another scene. In the face of his friends, accusations and God's silence, it, it's difficult to, to face accusations when God remains silent. But Job maintained his integrity and the Lord ultimately vindicated him. The foundation for Job's character was the fact that he feared God and shunned evil. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that's wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. To fear the Lord means to respect who he is and what he says and also what he does. It's not the cringing fear of a slave before a master, but the loving reverence of a child before a father. It's respect that leads to obedience. The remarkable thing about fearing God, said Olson uh, Oswell Chamber, is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you don't fear God, you fear everything is else. Several important truths emerge from this scene with Job. Not the least of which is that God is sovereign in all things. God maintains control. Even when it looks to us like things are out of control. God is on the throne of heaven and the angels do his will and report to him. And even Satan can do nothing to God's people without God's permission. The Almighty is one of the key names for God in the book of Job. It's used 31 times. And from the outset, the writer reminds us that no matter what happens 
in this world or in our lives, God is on the throne and has everything under control. Satan can touch God's people only with God's permission. And if God has to give Satan permission to touch us, God knows when he does it. And God uses whatever trials or whatever accusation that Satan is allowed to make against us, he uses it, it for our good and for God's glory. This guy named Philip Brooks, uh, writer, said, the purpose of life is the building of character through truth. God is at work in our lives to make us just like Jesus Christ. Romans 8 and 29, and he can use even the attacks of the devil to perfect us. When, when we are in the path of obedience, we find ourselves in a severe trial and we need to remind ourselves that nothing can come to our life that is outside of God's will. It was an old, on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary that Jesus shed his blood that sinful man might have life and have it more abundantly. God did something on Calvary that is undiscoverable by man. Man has yet to discover how a cow can eat green grass and produce white milk. There is so much about mankind and the soul of man that man will never know. But I'm so glad that we have a father in heaven that knows everything about us and still loves us. It is through the red blood of Jesus that sinners can plunge beneath and lose all of their guilty stain. It was by the infusion of uh, Adam's blood that we died in sin. But it's by the transfusion of Jesus' blood that we find new life. He died and was buried, but in three days he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. And right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father dealing with Satan's accusations. Whenever Satan tries to bring up something out of our path, Jesus is there saying, remember Calvary. Remember my blood. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another uh, lesson from your word. We thank you that you're saw fit to teach us about how Satan uh, will speak slanderously about us to you and that you've got it all under control and that there's much that we can learn as we go through trials and temptations in this life. Help us to stand strong and that, that we may bear up under the false accusations of Satan and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly, uh, well, thank you for joining us tonight uh, and or that day or whatever time you might be uh, viewing our YouTube uh, uh, recordings. Uh, we ask that you would be so kind as to subscribe so that you'll be informed when we put something new out there. Uh, we're doing uh, new lessons each Thursday night uh, until we 
uh, get to the point where we can meet again. And also on Sunday morning, my wife does a Bible study that's going up and I uh, will put a sermon out there each Sunday. And uh, I solicit your prayers that we'll continue to do the Lord's will and that we'll march up the King's Highway together. Until we meet again, take care.